Morning everybody. Okay then, uh, I'm back in my workshop and I'm uh, setting to on my next fittings for my boiler. And those are going to be the water gauge fittings. And this is the drawing of the water gauges. There's one on each side. You've got a top housing there and the bottom housing with your glass tube in the middle. So uh, I'm making these out of phosphor bronze and I've shown you in one of my last clips where I were utilising some uh, bronze tubing I've had on stock for a long time and I'm cutting segments out on it and then I'm uh, with the segments that I've cut out just putting them in my forge or chuck and uh, turning them down to a suitable round piece. I've made a start of these then. Uh, I'm not going to actually show you machining much of them because it's just basic turning really and I've I've shown you all that in my previous videos. So uh, where I'm up to then with this, um, the water gauge fittings, there's one on each side at boiler at the top here in those four housings. The top two are slightly a different arrangement to the bottom two but the, the important part of this is where these flanges go up to the boiler when they're screwed in you've got to make sure that from that from that position there to the glass centre position is same on both or you're going to get your glass uh, not going in square and then it's liable to crack the glass so this is the way I'm going about this job to get to get everything in line so it lines up for the glass I've screwed my fittings up to, up to the this stage where I'm at with the with the four flats on the square profile I've screwed them up to the face of the housing I want to I want the the flats of the fittings on, on one side of the flat to be exactly in line with the other flat at the bottom right so for example say my fitting when it were fully spanned up to the housing on the boiler say it was for example only there when it were tight I've took it back out put it set it up in the lathe and I've skimmed a couple of thou off each time I've tried it till I've got that fitting so when it's tight it's it's dead in line with that other fitting at the bottom now I don't know if that's how you're supposed to do it but that's my method of doing it and I'm only a novice at this then I've got my bottom fitting screwed that in as far as it would go and for example let's say it landed there when it were fully tight I've took it out and I've machined a bit off the back face a couple of thou at a time until I get that fitting so when it's tightened up fully tight both the flats like so are in line right th th there is another method you could do you could use uh, you could put shims at back at, at back of the collar of the flange and do it that way I suppose but then that's going to, that's going to affect where your, where your glasses, where your hole for your glasses is going to be. So I've done it this way, pure and simply, so that when I know that they're fully tightened up, they're going to be smack in line with each other like so. Then, okay, then I'll quickly go through the, the through the uh, setup I've done on my milling machine. Okay, so I've got my dividing head on my milling on my milling table. And uh, there's my milling machine. Got my dividing head set up. Set up. I've made a, f uh, a little fixture to go in the chuck with a quarter by forty threaded hole in, so that my water gauge housings all screw up to that shoulder, like it would do in the boiler. Here's my drawing on that face. 
then I've ma I've measured on me dials to get from that shoulder half inch to the centre where my water gauge glass centre will be. I've got that position. I've got my position central in the in the square. So what I'm doing now, I'm doing these top ones first. So when I screw all my water gauge housings into this block now, they'll all be the same distance repeatedly for that sight glass to be dead in the centre. Uh, so I'm doing the top ones first and I'm going straight through with the 5mm for the sight glass diameter. Then at the top half of the housing I've got to go through with a tapping size for quarter by 40 thread which is 7 30 seconds I think. So there's two like that then moving on to the bottom I'll screw the bottom ones into that shoulder up to the uh, fixture which I've made. Then everything's set for this hole. Now this hole here is just a, a, a smaller hole for the water to come through. The actual sight glass diameter is in that spigot which I'll be soldering on uh, that'll be next job. So that's just a quick explanation. I'm not going to show you machining it because it's just straightforward machining now it's set up. The hardest part is setting everything up. And once I've done that, uh, I'm going to make these other parts here. Uh, on the top one, I've just got to make a a quarter, a five sixteenths by forty piece to fit onto that, and I'm going to silver solder that on. And then on the bottom piece, the same. It's where the the nut, the land nut goes on the glass with the packing in and the sealing tube to tighten down onto the glass. And then uh, all I've got to do then is on the bottom one make a, another little spigot and silver solder it on there. A lot smaller though, that's only um, 532 by 40. I might be doing it 3BA though, I haven't decided yet. And uh, solder that on and that's for the with with the water will will drain when you when you blow the gauges out, so that'll have a pipe on that. And then all I've got to do once they're done, then that'll be the housings complete. Then I've just got to make the 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 tap for the bottom, the blanking plug for the top there. And then the top blanking plug where the glass slides in. So uh, I'll continue with this and I'll probably do another clip at a later stage. Uh, later stage and, uh, for I've me. I've got all my components uh, machine for my uh, water gauges. And believe it or not, there's actually 24 items to, to complete. To complete both the water gauges, um, I've put a 50 pence piece there just to give you a sense of scale, and some of them are quite small items. The two valves here I've done in stainless steel, the rest of the components are in uh, phosphor bronze. And all I've got to do now is silver solder in the top, in the top part of the uh, water gauge. That requires one part silver soldering in, like so. So that's on both the top ones, and then on the both the bottom ones, I've got the equivalent one there to silver soldering for the glass tube, and then the drain outlet there. I'll just zoom in a little bit. Yeah, that's the drain outlet on the bottom one. Um, 
The only thing I've not done is the little handles for the valve. That's those there. Because I've not decided whether that, that's showing a lever type. I've not decided whether I'm making lever types or circular knobs. So I've got consistency throughout the boiler. And those little handles are to fit on that valve there on, on this end. Just to, t to turn the valve on and off. Or in and out. Yeah, so... Uh, Quite involved that, uh, really, with 24 items to do. I've just got this glass to cut now that fits uh, like so in there when they're silver soldered in. So I've just got that glass to cut. I'll do that with my Dremel and a diamond wheel, I think. Uh, so my next, uh, my next part is to silver solder it now. I don't know if I'll show you silver soldering it, I'll, I'll see how I progress. I've actually shown you my silver soldering some of the other parts of the fittings uh, in previous videos. But the important thing is, is to make sure everything's clean, degreased and clean, and fluxed well, and then you'll have no problem with your soldering. Okay, that's my last uh, water gauge silver oh, solder. I'll now. just let that cool down. But while I've been doing that last one, I've managed to get um, I've managed to get the others cleaned up now. And here's a completed one. I've got the gland nut fitted where the glass fits. So the glass, this is the one of the top ones. The glass will slide through into the bottom one. And then this plug goes on top. I've not cut the glass yet. Um, and then the bottom one has got the uh, shut off valve in where you can blow the glass out through the drain hole. I've just got to make a handle, two handles for that. So, um, Basically, when it's got its gland nut on, that's how it'll it'll be situated on boiler. With the glass in between. Okay, then just a little update before I finally uh, finish this this little video on my, my water gauges. I've, ma I've now managed to get the gauges fitted into the boiler and uh, I've slightly gone and deviated from the drawing as regarding to the handles. Uh, if you remember in my past clip, the drawing I've got has got these lever type handles on and uh, I did actually make one of these handles but I, I wasn't really happy with it. And I'm going to put circular handles on rest it fittings on boiler. So I decided to make some stainless steel um, circular handles. And I've made them from solid stainless steel. And here's one that's partially made. So I've got my stainless steel knobs fitted now. So, coming on to glass then, I've managed to cut the glass and I've used my, uh, my Dremel with the diamond wheel in. Like so, I've just scored around it. In fact, you can cut right through it with that diamond wheel if you wanted and, and then just, just snap it. Now, no doubt there's, there's other methods of doing that. You probably just could score it with a, a sharp corner of a file I suppose but I've done it with my Dremel um, and uh, I took a measurement when I'd got my water housings gauge housings fitted into boil I took a measurement from uh, 
the bottom of the hole where the glass fits on the bottom housing and then up to where the cross hole goes across the one eighth cross hole goes across the top housing and my measurement was uh, two and two and a quarter I think or thereabouts and what I've done I've cut some silicon tubing to make some little o-rings and this silicon tubing is quite flexible and soft so I'm hoping that that will seal okay and then I've just threaded my glass in uh, put the nuts on then you just pop it into the bottom hole tighten your land nut and then you can uh, slide the top silicon seal up silicon o-ring rather and tighten your land nut and uh, they just want a little nip up with spanner then not too tight uh, and then on the top you put your your um, your bung in top. Can't quite see to thread that in sat here. I've got the other one, other side in. It just fits in like so, just to seal that hole off. Uh, so just going back to what I said in in a previous clip. That's why it's important to get your size from the actual inside of this flange where it fits in boiler to the centre of your glass that's why it's important to get that measurement so your glass is lined up because basically it's a five millimeter diameter glass going into a well in my case a five millimeter hole there's not much clearance it could be 5.1 I suppose so you haven't got a lot of play to get it actually lined up so that's why it's important that measurement and then once that's in uh, in position and lined up it just slides in and drops in uh, so yeah so that's my water gauges fitted and uh, I managed to take it for my final uh, pressure test the boiler yesterday and I've actually got my uh, I've got it registered now and I've stamped my number on on the side here, so it's it's uh, a fully uh, auth authenticated boiler now. Uh, so I think I'll move on to either the manifold um, block that fits on top or the regulator. Thanks for watching, and I'll, if you've not seen my other videos, take a look at them, and and if not, I'll catch you on my next video. Bye for now then.